Welcome back and thank you for keeping it uh, KTN Farmers TV. Today we are talking about public health and food safety. Uh, and before we took a break, Dr. Tari was telling us uh, some of the issues that really affect our food uh, and why emaciated animals may not be a food risk at the end of the, of the day. Uh, Dr. Tari, yes. or Prof, yes. um, we've also seen cases of uh, farmers using a lot of pesticides. Uh, from a public health perspective, how dangerous uh, are these? And, and having in mind that uh, Kenya has been accused of still using some of the pesticides that have been banned in other countries. We have been accused, but has it been proved? Until we are shown that this farmer was using a, a chemical that uh, is not allowed, uh, whatever is in the shelves currently is what is recommended. Mm -hmm. And now we have, uh, like I said, we have the Kenya Plant Health Inspection Services. We also have for the veterinary medicine, we have the veterinary medicine directory and all medicines that, and we also have the pesticide control board. All medicine to be used by the farmers come from, uh, are recommended. Each of these boards has a list of recommended uh, drugs or pesticides for use by the farmers. Of course, there are farmers who bring in uh, 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 pesticides and herbicides even from across Tanzania, which are prohibited here. And uh, the, this does really affect our industry because when the importers, especially the European countries, detect high levels of uh, some of these chemicals, then they ban the importation of our produce. We have what are called minimum residue levels of each chemical. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we spray animals, for example, for ticks, using tick sites, we know exactly what level should be used. And uh, the farmers are taught, uh, but of course, sometimes compliance is a problem. Okay. Yes, but uh, the veterinary department does it and actually they bring it to our labs and also to uh, the labs at Capis and other places to check what the picture is across the country. All right. And we are doing that. Okay. Um, with urbanization also came um, a lot of processed food. Yes. Uh, can we always say processed food is safe? We cannot always say processed food is safe because uh, the safety of the food depends on the manufacturing practices of the, of, the, of, the, of the plant from which they were obtained. Most of the manufacturers do not have quality control labs and therefore whatever produce comes from there cannot be assured. Uh, we also have a problem in that the Kenya Bureau of Standards uh, would, is not really uh, facilitated to police the food being manufactured in all areas of the country. It would be very good if the Kenya Bureau of Standards uh, disseminated their services to the county so that we have a standards bureau at the level of each county headquarters where they can be taking samples regularly and monitoring the quality of the food. Okay. Um, milk has also been termed as one of the most contaminated products from the farm. Uh, tell us a little bit about the milk value chain that uh, will help us or will help uh, the farmers ensure that the milk that ends up in our tables or on our tables is safe. Milk from a healthy animal is normally safe and contains very little or no bacteria. But milk from an animal with a disease like brucellosis Q fever, lift very fever, tuberculosis, etc. will shed the, 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 the milk will have organisms uh, as the milk comes from the udder of the animal. The other way that the milk can cause problem is contamination during processing and also during hunting. Milk also becomes a problem when the farmers do what is called adulteration of milk. 
and the adulteration of milk is either addition or subtraction of substances from milk for various reasons. For example, many farmers may want to prolong the, life, the shelf life of milk. So what do they do? They add antibiotics or even add formalin into the milk. Farmers would want to increase the volume of the milk, so they add water to the milk. Farmers may want to increase the butterfat content of their milk, so you add bluebird or ghee or any other of those produce. And these cause problems. The animal if treated with an antibiotic and the farmer does not observe the withdrawal period. And the withdrawal period is a period for which the milk must be retained before it can be released for human consumption. So if an animal is injected today, maybe for a particular antibiotic, we should wait for five days before we can take the milk. Many unscrupulous farmers will not observe this. Why is it a danger to take milk with antibiotics or any other food with antibiotics? For example, sometimes we use in chicken, we add uh, antibiotics or even coccidiosats to prevent disease in the chicken. You subject the individual who is taking the milk with uh, antibiotics to a low standard or low dose of antibiotics, which lead eventually to resistance. And once an organism develops resistance to a particular antibiotic, if a person gets sick and is treated with that antibiotic, he cannot be healed. And, and microbial resistance is now a major, major problem in the world. It is leading to the, the, the development of superbugs for which there is no treatment. And the veterinarian is one of the major culprits because we sell drugs to the farmers. If you go to a Maasai household or a household in Yeri, you find a farmer opening a cupboard for you where he has all the antibiotics that can be used in the treatment of livestock. Okay. So um, what do farmers need to know? Uh, or <coughs> do, do processors also have a way of telling that? Or do they have a system where yes, you can tell them yes, this milk yes, is alter yes, yes, uh, Kaitani, When the milk is taken to the creamery or dairy, like the KCC, as it is received, we conduct what are called platform tests. And platform tests is where we carry out uh, tests using our organs. We refer to them as organoleptic tests. You test the smell of the milk. You look at the milk. Is it clean? Is it dirty? You also uh, measure the density of the milk that will tell you whether something has been added. And uh, you also measure what we call the freezing, point, uh, the freezing point of the milk, because that will also tell you whether things have been added. So there are ways by which uh, the milk getting into the creamery uh, is tested. And if it does not meet the standard, it is rejected right away. OK. Yes. Uh, what about the eggs? Eggs are a major problem because as currently we are, we do not have actual standards for eggs, but we know that if you are producing eggs, uh, the eggs should be cleaned and uh, as you present them to the shelves, they should not be dirty. You find that some people think that if the eggs are cleaned, they will, they will rot, but this is not the case. Eggs can be cleaned with the disinfectant, and that will render them free from any uh, microorganism on the surface. Okay. Yes. We've also had issues of um, either business people, um, supermarkets using preservatives. Yes. Uh, how dangerous is this, or how unsafe does preservative make, make our meat or food? We can look at it at, uh, in two ways, in that if the preservatives are used by the people who are allowed to use them and who use the recommended 
uh, dosages or doses of the, uh, the, the preservative, then there is no problem. For example, the use of nitrates and nitrites has been mentioned, and it is allowed by law, but only up to certain levels and just for certain reasons. You'll find that in this country, the nitrates and nitrates are used to make uh, the, the meat look red and flesh, but that should not be what it is intended for. Mm -hmm. And they use higher doses than the recommended uh, dose of uh, the, 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 the preservative. So preservatives are good when used according to the, the regulations, but not when used by the layman for, to advance his business interests. Okay. Yeah. Do we have enough policies uh, or laws that govern uh, I will say without health? fear of contradiction is that, that we have laws and regulations. Of course, they are not enough. But the major issue is implementation and enforcement of those policies. We are continuing to make new laws. For example, currently now in Parliament is the new Livestock Bill 2021, which purports to license even bees such that if I own one hive, I'm supposed to register it with the, with the uh, county government authorities. Uh, farmers are up in arms. Bee, uh, beekeepers are up in arms because they are asking. This government that wants to license my bees, were they ever involved in helping me to, to keep the bees? The bees came to the hive on their own volition. Uh, and uh, there are other issues where we are even being told that you cannot, sell, you cannot get milk from your neighbor. Yes? The neighbor should sell to a registered person who delivers to the creamery, and there should be no farm gate sale of milk. It is very controversial. European countries have gotten there, but for us, it will take time. Okay. Yes. So, um, how important is traceability when it comes to food safety? Traceability is very important when it comes to food safety, uh, both for the local market and even for the export market, because we have uh, cases where a product is sold and a problem arises two, three weeks or months later. And if there was a proper traceability, it is possible to know where the source of the problem was and rectify. If you cannot trace back, then you are not likely to rectify the problem. For example, in the meat industry, the whole value chain of the, of the documents that we are talking about, that is traceability. And even the meat that you find in a bushery, that Aurora mark has a number, which is called the establishment number. So each slaughterhouse has its own established number. No two, bushery, no two uh, slaughterhouses have the same establishment number. So if meat is in your bushery and it is from establishment number X, we can trace back and know this, this meat came from slaughterhouse Y. And therefore, if it has a problem, we go and confront the meat inspector in that slaughterhouse to tell us why meat with problems was allowed to leave the slaughterhouse. Okay. Yes. We earlier talked about water. Yes. Uh, but we didn't talk about, we, we've seen a lot of uh, bottled water. Yes. Uh, from a, a public health perspective, are we able to always tell that all the waters on our shelves, on the supermarket shelves, are really the, safe? The, the problem here, Kaitani, is that the Kenyan market has a lot of counterfeits. Uh, for example, now in Nairobi, and especially in these areas where we have high aflatoxin levels, people depend on 
water bought from the shelves. So there are very good manufacturers who take very stringent measures and their water is very high quality. But there are others who are bottle water that is almost not treated. And the owners again is on Kenya Bureau of Standards. Make sure that periodically they go to the shelves, collect water samples, and do the tests and deny those that do not meet the standards licenses to sell their water. Okay. Currently, I can take water from another company, put in a bottle, and take to cabs for testing, say it's my water, and I start selling. Ideally, they should come, and now they are doing it. Once you apply for a license to bottle water, they come to the premises. They inspect the premises. They make sure you are following the standards, including bottling and labeling. And once they are satisfied, they give you the license. Unfortunately, we have in this country very good counterfeiters who will produce anything and sell. But uh, measures we have for water quality uh, uh, assessment and uh, the Bureau of Standards is doing a gallant job. Okay. Yes. So if I want to learn all these things on my own, where do I get all this information? There are so many schools of public health. The Minister of Health has at uh, the medical training institutes throughout the country, the de uh, departments of public health. At the University of Nairobi, we have the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, mm -hmm. where we train veterinarians, and part of what they learn is public health. The animal health institutes, what are commonly referred to as ahitis. We have an ahiti in Kabete, we have an ahiti in Domba, we have an ahiti in uh, Nyahururu. Uh, we have institutes like Bukura, Institute of Agriculture. Uh, there are quite a number of places where you can learn. Mount Kenya University has a very good uh, public health school. Mm -hmm. The medical school at the University of Nairobi also has a course uh, in public health, both at uh, undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Okay. Yeah. Don't you think it is also important that we introduce this, uh, some of these things to, to our children early? Maybe in it primary school. It is very school. important. It is very important. I don't know. When, 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 when we were in primary school, we were introduced to a subject called health science. And these were some of the things we were learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a subject called health science. And I, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong, it's still there. Okay. Yes. As we wind up, what do you think is uh, the future of uh, public health, especially uh, in Kenya? Or in the, the future region? of public health, Kaitani, is bright. Uh, what I would, I would urge the general public to do is not to depend always on government to protect you. You should also know that the onus is on you to protect yourself. If you are a farmer, make sure that whatever you are producing is good because you are selling it to another individual for consumption. If it is the milk, feed the cow well. Milk the cow in the prescribed manner. Store the milk in the way you have been taught and sell clean milk to your neighbor or to the creameries. Yes? Don't delight in that you put water into the milk that you sold to. There is no pride in that. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof Professor Peter Kathura, for sparing some time to come and educate us a little bit about the importance of public health and food safety. That is all the time we had today for our viewers back at home. Uh, until next time, goodbye. Thank you.